Hey everybody, I just want to show you another couple updates I got going on with my uh, sound quality car audio system. Um, what I have here is the Alpine wiring harness. Uh, I got the Kia Optima wiring harness um, to go with it, so it's a nice plug-in operation. I did uh, solder joints and shrink wrapped them all, heat shrink, uh, so it's a nice clean installation. Um, that way I can just uh, plug into the Alpine head unit, plug right into the Kia factory uh, factory harness, and it's all good to go. Uh, there's one wire I didn't use here, the pink one. Uh, apparently this is for like GPS or uh, some other module that I'm not going to be using. Uh, I believe it's a GPS or navigation kind of system. I won't be using that, so that one's just going to be left hanging. And this spool right here is my remote turn-on wire, it's soldered right into the harness. That's going to run all the way back to the amps to turn them on when the head unit turns on. So that's all done. And then I also decided what speaker wire I'm going to be using to run to all the speakers. Um, I, I'm still trying to keep this project reasonable and uh, I didn't think it would make a huge difference to get real expensive on on speaker wire so I'm going with this stuff because I had it uh, this has been sitting here at the store for I don't know <laughs> eight years <laughs> long time but uh, this is Phoenix Gold uh, 16 gauge oxygen free copper a lot heavier gauge than what's in the car now uh, what's in there is like 18 to 22 gauge real real fine wire. Uh, 16 I know it's not huge but uh, it's fine. It'll I think it'll be fine for this application. I'll have one run to each rear speaker and there'll actually be two complete runs to the fronts. Uh, one to the woofer, one to the tweeter. Uh, so that way um, later I can decide, because I haven't quite decided yet, if I want to do an active front stage which is basically four channels of amplification for two component sets it's a one channel to a tweeter, one channel to a woofer, um, and eliminate the passive crossover, or just power them both and use the passive crossover with one channel. Uh, we'll see. Any suggestions on that, I'd be interested to hear it. I've never run an active stage uh, before, so that'd be interesting to, uh, to see your thoughts on that. Um, I did seal up my my little gap here on my speakers with some dynamat seal that up I may put some more around the sides just to give this a little bit more mass um, actually stinger roadkill but you know what I mean um, I may put a little bit more around here to give it a little more mass I don't think this plastic is very resonant so I don't think it's really needed um, but but we'll see it's already got a nice gasket all the way around it actually seals to the car body really well from right from the factory so I don't need any gasketing material there or extra sealant. Um, one other thing that's really cool in a sound quality competition you have a book and in that book you want to show parts of your system what you're doing with it uh, pictures of your installation because the judges can't see that um, also a lot of guys will have th something like this called a system diagram um, so I've got I've got mine here. I did a bit of work on it to to see how uh, how it would lay out. Uh, so as of right now, I have really two sources: CD and iPod. Um, Alpine CDA 117 head unit. Uh, in this situation, I'm using a two amp setup. You've already seen the Sundown amp, but I'm deciding on my other amplifier here. This is a four channel Soundstream reference amp. Um, in, in this diagram I'm showing the uh, one channel for each of the fronts uh, using the passive crossovers. Um, this is a two amp situation and then two channels, one for each of the rear coaxials. Uh, subwoofer is a mono digital amp, uh, subwoofer amp from Sundown Audio. Uh, you can see I'm driving two 10 inch RE Audio SEXD2s, um, dual 2 ohm uh, woofers there. I'm going to wear these in in 2 ohm operation so I should get at normal voltage about uh, 720 volts or uh, watts rather, 720 watts out of that amp. Um, I also have to keep in mind power demands. Uh, I prefer not to get a new alternator 
Um, I don't mind getting an extra battery for the trunk, a small battery, so I may just uh, build it so I can just replace the batteries and uh, and be good to go. I don't want to have to get into putting a 250 amp alternator in. So I'm going to try to keep the wattage reasonable. Uh, plus I want to keep it under 1500 RMS total because that's what my power wiring can handle and I didn't want to go to a zero gauge kit just yet. I still might because I'm, I'm obsessive like that but uh, but not quite yet hopefully. Um, so that's what I got going on right now. Um, this took about uh, I'd say three hours, four hours on Photoshop. Um, I took several of these pictures and uh, cut them out. Some of them are stock photos, just cut them out. Put a little drop shadow, you know, cleaned them up. Uh, put my text and specifications up there. Um, I, you know, I can't, I really can't explain how to do it. Um, there's not an easy way. Uh, this is basically, I don't know, 12 years of Photoshop usage here so I kinda had to figure out how to do it as I go but I wanted a nice presentation for the judges uh, I'm gonna have a pretty a pretty complete book with all the photos system diagram all that stuff I'm actually weighing each component too as I put them in the car and I'm weighing anything I take out of the car so I can have a running total as to how much weight I've added to the vehicle like I said before I'm trying to stay under 200 pounds but the closer to 150 pounds the better um, I don't want the car to slow down. I don't want to get worse gas mileage and all that kind of stuff. So, All right. Well, thanks for stopping by again. Uh, stay tuned. I'll have more updates. I'm going to be testing some more amplifiers tomorrow, I believe. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. All right. Thanks a lot. We'll see you guys later.